This week on Heroes of RPGs, the second of the fathers of the role-playing game, the co-creator of Dungeons & Dragons, Dave Arneson. David Lance Arneson was born on the 1st of October 1947 in Hennepin County, Minnesota, in the United States of America. He was an American game designer best known for co-developing the first published role-playing game, Dungeons & Dragons, with Gary Gygax in the early 1970s. Arneson's early work was fundamental to the development of the genre developing the concept of the role-playing game using devices now considered to be archetypical, such as adventuring in dungeons and using a neutral judge who doubles as the voice and consciousness of all other characters to develop the storyline. Arneson's role-playing game design work grew from his interest in war games. His parents bought him the board war game Gettysburg by Avalon Hill in the early 1960s. After Arneson taught his friends how to play, the group began to design their own games and tried out new ways to play existing ones. Arneson was especially fond of naval war games. Exposure to role-playing influenced his later game designs. In college history classes, he role-played historical events and preferred to deviate from recorded history in a manner similar to what-if scenarios recreated in war games. In the late 1960s, Arneson joined the Midwest Military Simulations Association, a group of miniature war gamers that included amongst its ranks future game designer David Wesley. Wesley asserts that it was during this period that Arneson helped develop the foundations of modern role-playing games on a one-to-one -one scale basis by focusing on non-combat objectives, a step away from wargaming towards the more individual play and varied challenges of later RPGs. Arneson was a participant in Wesley's wargame scenarios, and as Arneson continued to run his own scenarios, he eventually expanded them to include ideas from Lord of the Rings and Dark Shadows. In 1969, Arneson was a history student at the University of Minnesota and working part-time as a security guard. He attended the second Gen Con gaming convention in August, at which time wargaming was still the primary focus, and it was at this event he met Gary Gygax. Dave had developed a game world in which his players were playing fantasy versions of themselves in the medieval barony of Blackmoor, a land inhabited in part by fantastic monsters. As the game quickly grew and characters developed, Arneson devised scenarios where they would quest for magic and gold, escort caravans, lead armies for or against the forces of evil, and delve into the dungeons beneath Castle Blackmoor. The gameplay would be recognisable to modern D&D players, featuring the use of hit points, armour class, character development and dungeon crawls. This setting was fleshed out over time and continues to be played to the present day. Much of the fantasy medieval trope of D&D such as the concept of adventuring in dungeons originated with Blackmore, but it also incorporated time travel and science fiction elements. In November 1972, Arneson travelled to Lake Geneva to meet with Gary Gygax, and Gygax expressed a desire to play a game of Blackmore itself. After playing in the Blackmore game, Arneson refereed, Gygax almost immediately began a similar campaign of his own, which he called Greyhawk, and asked Arneson for a draft of his playing rules. The two then collaborated by phone and mail, and playtesting carried out by their various groups and other contacts. Gygax and Arneson wanted to have the game published, but Guidon Games and Avalon Hill rejected it. Arneson could not have afford to invest in the venture, so TSR was founded separately by Gygax and Brian Bloom. Arneson formally joined TSR as their Director of Research at the beginning of 1976, but left at the end of the year to pursue a career as an independent game designer. TSR had agreed to pay Arneson royalties on all D&D products, but when the company came out with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons in 1977, it claimed that AD&D was a significantly different product, and so did not pay him royalties for it. In response, Arneson filed the first of five lawsuits against Gygax and TSR in 1979. In March 1981, as part of a confidential agreement, Arneson and Gygax resolved the suits out of court by agreeing they would both be credited as co-creators on the packaging of D&D products from that point on and Arneson would receive a 2.5% royalty on all AD&D products. This provided him with a comfortable six-figure annual income for the next 20 years. This did not end the lingering tensions between them. Outside of TSR, in 1979, Arneson and Richard L. Snyder, an original Blackmore player, co-authored Adventures in Fantasy, a role-playing game that attempted to recapture the original spirit of the role-playing fantasy game that Arneson had envisioned in the early 1970s, instead of what Dungeons & Dragons had become. 
In his personal life, Arneson married Frankie Ann Mornau in 1984. They had one daughter, Melia, and two grandchildren. While Gary Gygax was president of DSR in the mid-1980s, he and Arneson reconnected, and Arneson briefly relinked Blackmore to Dungeons & Dragons with the DA, Dave Arneson, series of modules set in Blackmore. The four modules, three of which were written by Arneson, detailed Arneson's campaign setting for the first time. When Gygax was forced out of TSR, Arneson was removed from the company before a planned fifth module could be published. Gygax and Arneson again went their separate ways. In 1988, Arneson stated his belief that RPGs, whether paper or computer, were still hack and slash, and did not teach novices how to play. He hoped that computer RPGs would teach newcomers how to roleplay while offering interesting campaigns. Arneson stepped into the computer industry and founded 4D Interactive Systems, a computer company in Minnesota that is still in business today. He also did some computer programming and worked on several games. He eventually found himself consulting with computer companies. Living in California in the late 1980s, Arneson had a chance to work with special education children. Upon returning to Minnesota, he pursued teaching and began speaking at schools about educational uses of role-playing and using multi-sided dice to teach math. In the 1990s, he began working at Full Sail, a private university that teaches multimedia subjects, and continued there as a professor of computer game design until 2008. In 1997, after Wizards of the Coast purchased DSR, Peter Atkinson paid Arneson an undisclosed sum to free up D&D from royalties owed to Arneson. This allowed Wizards to retitle Advanced Dungeons & Dragons to simply Dungeons & Dragons. Arneson also made a cameo appearance in the Dungeons & Dragons movie as one of the many mages throwing fireballs at a dragon, although the scene was deleted from the completed movie. Arneson and Dustin Klingman founded Zeitgeist Games to produce an updated D20 system version of the Blackmore settings, and Goodman Games published and distributed Dave Arneson's Blackmore in 2004, and Goodman produced a few more Blackmore products in the next year. They also published Dave Arneson's Blackmore, the first campaign in 2009, the fourth edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Arneson continued to play games his entire life, including Dungeons and Dragons and military miniatures games, and regularly attended an annual meeting to play the original Blackmore in Minnesota. At Full Sail University, he taught the class Rules of the Game, a class in which students learned how to accurately document and create rule sets for games that were balanced between mental challenges for players and physical ones for the characters. He retired from the position on June 19, 2008. Dave Arneson died on April 7, 2009, after battling cancer for two years. According to his daughter Malia, the biggest thing about my dad's world is he wanted people to have fun in life. Arneson received numerous industry awards for his part in creating Dungeons and & Dragons and other role-playing games. In 1984, he was inducted into the Academy of Adventure Gaming Arts and Designs Hall of Fame. And in 1999, he was named by Pyramid Magazine as one of the Millennium's most influential persons, at least in the realm of adventure gaming. In many ways, Dave Arneson added to the hobby the most fun parts of it. The challenges outside combat, the role-playing itself, and for that, I thank him. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll catch you later.